This video is more or less a continuation of last week's video, so if you're wondering how I created the source sounds that I'm using in this video, then you can check the last one out. These are some of the sounds that I created. Also these ones down here. And I've simply taken all of these sounds, put them on one track, and I cut out the silences more or less, and just created one long file with all the sounds. And now we can create a new MIDI track, and I'm just going to use Ableton Sampler here, and I'm going to put this long file inside of the sampler, and now we can just increase the volume a bit here. And for this sound, we're going for a more of a punchy impact sound, so we can adjust the envelope here accordingly. And let's just dial this in, turn the sustain down. We're going to be looking for around a two second long decay of this, maybe. The next thing I would do is to activate the pinch envelope, which is also something that I really like, especially for punchy impact sounds. And we are going to have to play around with the decay here as well. Let's just leave it like that for now. And now we can also just browse through the sample as different starting points are obviously going to give us different results. So nothing too fancy so far, but now we can go and start working with MIDI. And we can start with a C3, which is just a sample at its original pitch. But now an interesting thing to do is to play multiple notes at the same time at different pitches. So let's say we're going to grab a really low note here and then one that's quite a bit higher up. And now what's going to happen is that all these notes are going to start at the same point in the sample, but they are all going to play the sample at a different speed. And you can experiment with this and go really low on one note and then also really high on another one. And so especially if you're playing the final part of the sample and you're gonna notice that while the other sounds are already finished, the lower pitched sample is still gonna play. What you can also do with the sampler here is to use the looping function. So you could just set it up like this here and then just choose a specific section that you like to be looped. And so you can control the starting point here. And as soon as it reaches this section here, it's gonna just start looping. But let's deactivate this for now. So the next step, we can do some more processing to this. And we can use some chorus on this one. But we wanna keep the beginning of the sound or the transient of the sound free from the effect. So we can just automate the dry wet here and more or less bring it in in the tail of the sound. And we can do the same with some other effects, like for instance, a phaser, which we also just want at the end of the sound. And we can just duplicate this and choose a flanger and play around with the settings here a bit. But this way we can assure that the transient of the sound is not going to be affected by any of these effects here. We can also use some more compression to bring out the effects here at the end. And to make it a bit more punchy, you could also use something like a transient shaper. Let's maybe just use drum bus in this case, but you obviously can use just any transient shaper you have available. And if you have some sort of a sub enhancing plugin, you can also use this and see if you can make it work to give the sound a bit more weight. And as I said before, the main technique now to get different results and variations of this is to change the pitch of these sounds. And you can also change the starting point of this. You could use the random plugin here. And by doing this, you could make sure that each time this is triggered, it's going to trigger different notes. So by doing this, you're automatically going to get a lot of different 
variations of this. And you can also change the starting point here if you go to this MIDI section and you map the sample offset to the velocity and set it to 100% here. Then now the velocity of each individual node is gonna dictate the starting point in the sample. You could either use the velocity plugin here and randomize it so it's gonna start at a different velocity each time. But you could also just go into the MIDI editor here and click the randomize button here and it's gonna change the velocity of these sounds. I'm going to deactivate these for now because we don't necessarily need this. Just if you're using Ableton, you can do this. And I guess some other samplers are going to have very similar functionalities. Now, if you wanted to make this sound a bit more wet sounding, uh, you could either use Disperser or just use EQ3 here. I guess most people know this trick by now. Just duplicate EQ3 a few times. And you're going to get a very similar effect to the Disperser plugin. Something interesting to do as well is on top of the pitch envelope or instead of it, you can also draw in pitch envelopes directly in MIDI. Uh, so we are going to set the range to the maximum here. And then we can go in here, just choose the pitch bend. And now you can draw in uh, pitch envelopes here as well, which again are just going to change the speed of the sample play back, which can also give us just some more interesting sounds. Always keep playing around with the sample starting point because this is why we have this long sound here. We can get a lot of different variations and happy accidents. And then other interesting thing to do is to use a filter here. You could use the internal filter in, in the sampler or obviously just use any Q plugin or any filter that you have available. I'm just going to use this one here and I'm going to automate it so that in the tail of the sound we're only going to have some lower frequencies here. So I'm just kind of going to fade it out. And now an interesting thing to do is to use Alt-GT and just automate it the same way, just kind of in the opposite direction and inverse this curve essentially. So as we go down with the filter, we are pushing the sound up again with OTT. So we can draw in a curve like this, for example. And by doing this, we're essentially just increasing the volume of these filtered out sounds here. And if OTT is not enough, you can just use a glue compressor at the end and push the volume with this as well. And I really like the tails you get by doing this. And of course now it's just time to play around with the pitch of all of these, with the starting point of the sample. And if you can just randomize stuff, record a bunch of variations of this. You can use any effects you like here, obviously. You can use different automation curves on these. Uh, use different pitch envelopes, use different pitch ranges, use different filters, different filter settings. If you just keep doing this a couple of times, you're gonna get some really unique and interesting results. <laughs> 